Okay, good afternoon, welcome back. I hope you have a, a relaxing fall break and enjoy the foliage. I'll show you week eight, which is very simple because it's about today. That's it, no more than that. And then I will spend today's class introducing the criteria, the parameters for the final project, and then going on a series of examples with you trying to evaluate, assess the relevancy of documents to be included or excluded from the final project. I will be talking about the final project again next week and from time to time between now and the end of the semester I will be asking you how you are doing and whether or not you want to open a discussion on the final project. There will be no real written assignments from this point on. There will be one, but very simple, much simpler than the others. And in fact, it will be worth only one point. And it will be a preliminary work for the final project just to get you going in the right direction. So from this point on, for the second half of the semester, this is week eight out of 15 because the calendar of the fall semester is pretty weird. From this point on, you should focus on your project so that even though your project may not be finished by the end of November, you have at least enough for your presentation because your presentation, and I'll talk about that today and on other dates, your presentation is basically a show and tell. You coming on screen in a video recording or doing the same in front of me on Zoom, showing what you found, the interesting documents that you found in the archives, the digital archives that I have linked in the page about the final project, and explaining what's so interesting, what's so exciting about a document, putting on the screen passages and commenting on them without reading, showing that you can talk about your work without uh, having a text in front of you to follow word by word, okay? And of course, next week we'll resume our usual routine. I will be talking about Louise Losser Hale, a motor car divorce on Tuesday and Thursday, and Thursday I will introduce another movie, uh, a hybrid silent movie, a silent movie with just a little bit of sound about the automobile entitled The First Auto. Okay, let me know if the screen is flickering or turning yellow as you may have seen it do before the class started. It's, of course, one of the pins on the VGA cable. I don't want this to be annoying uh, and uh, distracting. So let me know and I can switch to my other portable computer, my other tablet, and I have an HDMI cable, so that would uh, do it, okay? This is week eight that was posted just this morning and it's very simple. You find a link to the presentation I'll be using today, but it's an important presentation for you because whenever you're working on the final project, you should refer to it because in there you will find not only the sources you should be working on, but also you will find a template to follow for you to catalog the documents. The project is not a traditional paper, although an alternative is available, and I'll introduce that before the end of the class. You'll be archiving and cataloging documents that are relevant for the topic of our class, looking at primary documents, okay? So not the usual boring paper. The assignment is simply to continue with the readings from a motor car divorce. This is the second of 
three readings and there is one more will be assigned later on. So, as I said before, the default final project for the students in this class involves low level research, simple enough research inside archival sources that are available in digital archives. The purpose of your exploration of those sources is to identify documents that are interesting for the themes or topics that revolve around the introduction of the automobile in society in the early 1900s. And you can do something that is similar to what we've been doing in class or go a slightly different route, but this has to do with a different quality of work that is not simply finding articles on Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet and then summarizing them or regurgitating them inside a paper that is necessarily derivative, is trying to find something that is interesting, that is possibly not even uh, mentioned, quoted in any scholarly work, and then performing preliminary analysis and also classifying the document, summarizing the document, extracting some quotes from it in a very simple uh, presentation following a prescribed format. So the focus point or focal points are simply a suggestion. I've listed here most of the topics that have been discussed or will be discussed in the second half of the semester in this class, but it doesn't mean that you should focus simply on those topics as long as you understand what is culturally relevant in a document that you select for inclusion and will try to work today, next week, in your last assignment on the criteria for inclusion or exclusion so that you understand what is a strong, what is strong evidence of relevancy for the project and what instead should be simply discarded. Of course, I'll be available for you to assist you whether you want to schedule a meeting with me on Zoom on a Monday, Wednesday or Friday afternoon or you want to discuss uh, your, your findings in class or uh, uh, include something in your Google Docs file for me to review even a partial draft of your document of your project I'll be there to assist you and guide you and tell you yes this is a nice enough document but you could find something better or this is not at all relevant so what we've been talking about is fears and concerns concerning the technology of the automobile, the excitement that came with the presentation of this technology, the enthusiasm, this unbridled desire, I want an automobile, I want it now, I want to drive at fast speeds, etc. And we've been spending time, we've seen plenty of examples already in the lightning conductor, and we'll find more in a motor car divorce in uh, Barzini's book about the nervous and the physical reactions. Not just the description of the feelings, but the physiological reaction to the experience of driving. Which means, for example, that if you're able to find, there are quite a few, but they're not so easy to find. If you find an article in any of the sources that you'll find listed here, describing at length with details the first experience, and that's a subgenre of the period, people writing short stories or articles to describe their first experience of a car, that's absolutely something 
relevant and pertinent. We'll be talking more about tech evangelism in its most primitive format as it emerged with the introduction of the technology of the automobile. This idea that you have a product that people are not simply using or adopting in their life, but then they feel compelled to talk about it all the time to try and convert other people to the use of this particular technology. And, of course, uh, we can speed up our research by using the right keywords or key phrases. We have sources that comprise, uh, in, that, that include hundreds of articles, short stories, poems, so we have to find an expedient, practical way to skim through the text or use keywords and advanced search techniques in order to find uh, documents that are relevant without committing too much time to the process. This is what we'll be looking at, and, and the next section has the actual links. We'll be looking at magazines. Some of the magazines we're looking at specialize on the topic of the automobile. Plenty of them were introduced during the time because the technology was successful, but it was also successful in terms of marketing. It was easy to create and open, establish a magazine about the automobile because you could get money from the ads. There was money that was being invested by the companies. Of course, some of these magazines lasted only a few years, others lasted for decades, but we will also look at general kind of magazines. Reading was a big form of entertainment during the period. There were plenty of magazines with a mix of poems, short stories, extracts, expert, excerpts from novels, sometimes installments of novels so that if you were a subscriber you could read the entire novel through a series of issues over a period of a year or a year and a half. That was the case for a motor car divorce that was published on the Bookman entirely, so the readers of that magazine could read it in its entirety. And articles, and because the automobile was a trending subject in society, not all the time, but once in a while inside those magazines, Harper's Bazaar and others, you find very interesting articles or fiction pieces about it. And we'll concentrate on the 1900s or the early 1910s because that is the context of the examination of the topic in the class. And that's where we usually find the most exciting documents about this, the most innovative. Okay, so uh, I've put a strike through without canceling for sources that were used in 2021, everything else that you find here that doesn't have a strike through can be used, and in fact, a little more than that. I've listed the sources in alphabetical order by the first significant word, right, in this case, automobile. It doesn't mean that the first one is more important, so make sure to scroll up and down. You have a few lines about each magazine telling you a little more about it and about the genres of documents you can find inside and also in the very first stage of your research for the project. Just be curious. Just open a few of these links. Have a look. Go through a few pages. See in general how you feel about this kind of source. Explore enough options to find one or more options that are comfortable for you, okay? So don't be lazy, don't do all your work on one link. And it doesn't mean, it's up to you to use one 
or multiple of these links, right? It's your project. I'm just offering you options. Okay, so you have a few collections. What you find, it's mostly from this uh, uh, digital archive or platform that serves a consortium of universities. Of course, Stony Brook being the cheap university that it is, is not a partner in this project, yet we're lucky that most of the documents are available in full view and can be fully searched by anyone, even universities that are not partners, okay? And, and so I've made sure to include all such sources. As you see here, you have multiple, so multiple issues from 1907 and 1908, because 1907 is when things starting to come together, when the technology transitioned from being an exotic toy for rich people into a product that is, first of all, reliable enough, and second of all, <coughs> on the verge of being mass produced by Ford and other companies in such a way that within the next five to 10 years, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, millions of people will be able to take advantage of it. Next, you find the automobile magazine. I've included only one because I didn't think that it um, was as useful as other sources, meaning that in this case, as in the previous one, you also find inside this magazine, for the most part, you find technical articles about engineering. And we're not interested in those articles because they're not culturally relevant. If an article is simply about a new kind of magneto, a new technology for carburetors, and they don't have any commentary about society, about social practices, social customs, social roles, identity, gender, etc., then we're not interested in it because this class is not about the history of the automobile as a piece of engineering. It's about the automobile and society and how the automobile becomes the first modern technology in that it supports the creation of a public persona, changes or alleges that a change will occur in the identity or the lifestyle of the user. And so you have here more automobile topics from 1905 and 1907. The Automotor Journal, Car Illustrated, and you have more of this because you have a better mix inside this kind of magazine of interesting document. In fact, for example, among other things, you find the installments of another romance novel, motor romance novel by Alice and Williamson, the author of The Lightning Conductor, this one called The Princess Passes. Harper's Bazaar is a generalist magazine, so it's not about the automobile, but again, since it's trying to pick up on everything that is fashionable or trendy, here and there, you find very interesting pieces, some articles, but especially fiction, especially short stories or novellas, meaning a longer short story. Again, for the chronology, I've picked between collections of issues between 1907 and 1909, but you can go yourself to the catalog where you will find in full view every issue from 1870 to 1924. Of course, disregard anything before 1904 or 1905, and don't go as far as 1924. But if you find this easy to work with, but you're looking for something specific because you're trying to build your 
collection of documents about a specific topic, you can open the general catalog and then explore from there, right? This is what you find in here. And again, this is limited search, but you can see how many, it's not actually a complete collection. I see number 44 is missing, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an exhaustive examination of the sources. It's just to find enough documents that are interesting. Same for the idler added this. Yes, Johnny. I'm not insisting that you pick specific years. I'm saying that probably before 1904, you would have to work harder to find a variety of articles on the automobile in the sources. And past 1911 or 1912, you wouldn't probably find enough that is interesting and exciting in the middle of a number of passages since the, the automobile has become part of regular life where a character in a short story or a journalist is mentioned in the automobile but that mention doesn't have any real significance so you would find too many hits and you would have to commit too much time before you can find significant examples but again those are my suggestions okay and again, even for the idler, you can open the link in and look at more years. And again, the idler is not an, a magazine about the automobile, but you may find articles or short stories or poems that are significant. Life is another generalist magazine, very popular at the time and trying to be trendy and fashionable, it included enough pieces about the automobile, especially during these years, 1906 or 1909 is what I've picked. And I'm trying to change this from class to class. Motor Age clearly is a specialized magazine But as I said, even specialized magazines only have some articles that are relevant for the purpose of our research. Scribner is another American magazine that published a lot of fiction and some articles, okay? And as I said, it's up to you to explore So. You find here a description of the goals. I just wanted to have everything included on this page for reference so that whenever you start working on the project or you have uh, completed a section, a stage, a step of your project, you want to review what the parameters are, you find them there. But I'm not going to repeat anything in here other than relevancy is dependent is completely dependent on the contents of the documents so anything could be included from an article to short stories poems pieces that were supposed to be funny for the readers of the time even vignettes and illustrations can be relevant but only some of them and ads, of course you find plenty of ads for automobiles in some of these magazines. You may find dozens of ads for automobiles in every single issue and every volume uh, includes several of those issues. However, stay away from ads that are just plain, that will just say buy my automobile because it is superior, because it is more comfortable, because it is faster, because it is more reliable, etc. Okay? If an ad is not unique in some way, 
if it doesn't offer something that needs unpacking, that you need to analyze for the average reader to be understood, if it is too plain and too direct, then it should be discarded. And I've included a few examples of what it means to be relevant for a commercial ad. In here, I've added the two basic criteria. So an ad with an illustration is not significant unless the illustration is rich in details and in some ways it tells a story. It describes a situation. And of course, ads from this period are all accompanied by texts that can be long. Usually the longer the text, the better it is. But again, even the texts for these automotive ads can be simply descriptive or technical. This, these are the details, the specs of the engine on this car. This is how much the various model costs. Those things are not culturally significant, right? You can pick a topic if you find it easier to uh, work from that in order to find relevant examples. It's not required, however, and my recommendation based on the experience of previous classes is that if you pick a topic or a theme, make it generic enough that you don't have to commit too much time to research and find relevant document on that specific topic, okay? Because any topic could be developed with the help of these digital archives, but you have to find something that is manageable. So your documents, which don't have to be many, ideally would be something like five or six documents, don't really have to be unified by the same topic because already you're bound to have commonalities because they all deal with the topic, the general topic of automobile and society. However, you may like to put together a collection about automobile and women. Well, that is generic enough that you will easily find document. But if your idea is for example, uh, devices for uh, the security of drivers and passengers, then you will struggle to find enough documents that are not simply technical, but are also relevant for culture and society. You would be able to do it, but you would have to commit too much time to the research. As far as the presentation of the evidence, you have the template, so I'm not going to say anything about it. In general, stay away from things that are just descriptive and factual, that don't contain commentary, that are just the description of what happened at a race or a car show without any commentary, without passages that, once again, you would need to explain or unpack with your analysis. And most importantly, stay away from anything that is purely, solely technical, okay? And it's easy to see what the nature of an article is from the title or from the first paragraph or just by looking at it very quickly without having to read everything. The overall length of the project, distributed through five or six different documents, should be between 25 and 3,000 words, including quotes, because every document will come presented with significant quotes and the bibliographical references. You can choose any uh, official format that you're familiar with, and you will place your project inside the same Google Docs file that was shared with you at the beginning of the semester, the one way you've been working, because this way, whether you visit me during office hours or during Zoom office hours, we can go put the document on the screen and I can review and comment on your draft, or, as I said, 
you can start including. At the beginning, you may just go through a selection of the documents without working on each one of them and just include the title and the link, but then you can ask me to evaluate the documents and tell you whether they're relevant enough, they're strong enough, they're interesting enough, okay? Especially, it doesn't have to be all of them, but especially if you have doubts about the relevancy of a particular document. So this is the process. You have to spend some time finding your sources. That's one of the most relevant, strategically essential parts of your project to find something that is interesting because otherwise your analysis will be pretty limited, right? So make sure that you start working on this. It is not exactly the kind of project you can do during the last two hours of the night of the um, deadline for the final project. And remember that the final project is indeed the last thing you will do inside your Google Docs file. So after the deadline, I will be locking up those files, okay? At this point, the assignments, for, for the assignments, you had all the flexibility uh, that you needed. You could post the assignment past the deadline with not too many consequences. In this case, I'm the owner of the file, the file after the deadline will be viewable by you, accessible by you to see grades, to see comments, etc. But you will not be able to make changes unless you request an extension, you're given one, okay? So number one is very important. If you have do good documents, you will have a good project. More importantly, it'll be easier, okay? So make sure you devote enough time exploring the sources. The first thing you will see in the template is the bibliographical reference of the document, of each document you include. Then you will need to include a specific link, a direct link to it. Next, you will briefly summarize the context and the main ideas in the document, the genre. You will include some quotes, classify in a very short, direct way the topics or subtopics of the documents. And again, your project may have a variety of subtopics. You will have a paragraph or two with analytical remarks explaining the significance of the passages or the story, the situations in the documents you are presenting. And this is, of course, much more important than the summary or quotes and you repeat the process for five or six documents but again there is no magical number your project should not be comprised of too many documents with very short summaries with limited quotes with limited analysis so in here you have the golden ratio between five and six but it could be four it could be seven and again if you're not sure whether you're deviating from the norms, then let me know, I can look, or you can describe the project to me during a meeting, and I can reassure you whether or not that is acceptable. Before I show you the template, oh, yes, um, go ahead. And the quotes are uh, like considered in the word count. We don't have yes, to exactly. add extra yeah. words. Yes, exactly. No, 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 no. And that's why it is between 2,500 and okay. 3,000. Of course, you have to be strategic, you have yeah. to be selective, right? Because you also have the summary, and therefore, quotes should be there whenever the language is so powerful, so the, the, the evidence of the importance of the passage is such that you want to include those quotes rather than summarizing the content of the article, right? And that is also what you will be doing during the presentation, reading some passages, and then offering your comments, describing the document in general, summarizing the context in which those quotes are found. So 
as I said before, there are several ways you can skim through a PDF or the browser. You can download the document, you can look at it inside your browser and just look at the titles, right? Or whenever you find a title that is interesting, look at the first paragraph and then decide whether you want to continue reading. But depending on how you approach the project, you may, especially if you're looking for a specific topic, you may uh, want to use keywords, and I've listed here keywords including words that are part of the language of the time, words that have fallen out of fashion, but were very popular, way, were, were trending in magazines of the time. So automobile is often more uh, frequent in those publications than car itself. But besides the word automobile and automobiles, you may find the verb automobiling to describe the activity of going out of the car, of, with a car. And someone who's an aficionado, an avid user of the technology, may be called an automobilist or an autoist, even though those words, at least in American English, fell out of fashion. Automobilism is being often used in reference to the fashionable activities surrounding the use of the automobile. And automobility was sometimes being used by some of these publications to talk about the phenomenon of the use of the car. So motor was another word that was applied to cars, which was short for motor car, which could be spelled in different ways, with a hyphen as two different words, as one word. Motor car was very popular in England, but during that time, the so-called Atlantic version of English was very popular in magazines. So you may have noticed how even in a motor car divorce, even though the author is American and it was published in New York, the spelling is often the spelling of British English. And at the beginning, the very first page of a motor car divorce, Louise Closer Hale, through her character, Peggy, Peggy Ward, is saying that automobile is a bit vulgar and that she should be saying motor car because that is uh, cooler, okay? So besides that, you have motoring, you have motorist, you have motorism, and also anti-motorism. I should have added anti-motorist in here because there was a big debate going on through uh, various um, publications at the time whether or not the automobile should be accepted or rejected. Okay? or the use of the automobile be curtailed and limited in a variety of ways. Of course, you have motor men who are uh, spelled in different ways. Chauffeur was a very popular word to indicate a professional driver, but the female, feminine version was also introduced, chauffeurs, because many women became uh, drivers and supporters of their technology. Of course, you can be looking for driver and passenger, although those words are more generic. And vehicle, you can also use as um, keyword or track. But keep in mind that during that period, especially the earliest part of the 1900s, even locomobile was applied to the car. And keep in mind there were plenty of steam cars and electric cars. Sometimes the term, the phrase horseless carriage was used. Of course, you can look for speed because mentions of speed could lead you to interesting findings. Engine, although engine is generic and could be used in reference to a train as well, you could use references to the parts of the automobile, steering wheel, gasoline, benzene, which was another word used for fuel at the time, car fuel, ignition spark, tires, etc. Now, the language itself was undergoing a transition 
new vocabulary was being introduced, but some of the jargon applied to the automobile was being borrowed from other areas and therefore make sure if you're doing your research initially based on keywords make sure you don't find documents that do not apply to the technology of the automobile at all keep in mind for example that automobile before the 1900s was often applied to a self-propelled torpedo and sometimes self-propelled boats were defined as automobiles. Car is the most generic term of all because during the period it refers to a car in a train or a trolley car or even a horse car for a carriage. Cab was not necessarily a taxi cab with an internal combustion engine or electrical engine. It could also be simply a carriage drawn by a horse. A machine during that time could be a bicycle. Initially, the bicycle was the machine par excellence, or a plane, or other devices, including a typewriting machine, or a telephone, or a buzzer in an office. Engine, of course, could be used in the literature of the time in reference to train engine, trains engine or locomotive engine. And even a motorman could be a label applied to a trolley conductor, a tram conductor, or a train conductor. Let me show you the template before we look at examples and I want you to uh, work together on that okay so this is a possible template but it's actually the recommended template I called it a possible template because if you have a better way in mind based on your particular project to catalog your documents you can do so but within reason and with justification and Possibly in that case, if you deviate vastly, widely from the template, you may want to consult with me. So you can follow this and you can cut and paste the various elements to create a template that you replicate in your Google Docs file. Of course, if you just copy the various section, don't include the italics or keep them for yourself until you're done, but the final version of your project should not include the italicized portions which are just instructions, okay? The graphical reference is the first item in the catalog of each document. So I've made an example myself. I don't have the author's name, which is pretty common in publications from the period. So I just include the title, the title of the article, the name of the magazine, the volume, the number, the issue number, the place where it was published, the date, and the page. Okay, bibliographical reference. As far as formatting, you can use other, uh, other formats. Okay, in this case, my, just a moment, in this case, my uh, source was Google Books, and therefore I have the link in here. Um, getting the link to a specific page uh, is a bit cumbersome in Google. In Avitrust, it is much easier. Provide an example. Let me go back to one of the sources. Okay, so this is my source from Adi Trust. And when, let's say I want to link to the beginning of this story, I will just 
place that page on the screen. I'll click on it to make sure that the system registered the click and knew that I was there. And once I've clicked and the focus is there, you saw also the frame that changed, the border became darker. Then I simply go to share. And you have two options. One is a permanent link to this item, which means just the magazine, not the article. What you want to borrow, copy, is the link to this page. And you can click in here to transfer that into your clipboard and then paste it into your Google Docs document. I'll show you the same process with Google. And in general, of course, Google is more difficult to work with because Google is a commercial platform, so it's trying to be selective in the kind of content they give you, uh, provide additional links, etc., misdirect you at any time. So I've tried to stay away from Google Books as much as possible. Keegan, your question now. Mm -hmm. um, my question was about uh, the bibliography reference. Yes. Um, are, is it supposed to be located within a word site page, or should it? No, you, you get it from the source itself, right? So if I have to source this, the bibliographical reference will include William J. Locke, the, the name of the author, the title, Septimus, the name of this publication, right, which is the Idler and Illustrated Monthly Magazine, and then, since there are several issues in here, of course, the page number is 125, but I have to go back to page one. In this case, or to the earliest cover page to find the issue loading, but we can see that it's okay. October 1908, the volume is 35. And you like variety of medical reaction, so it might be 34, and the issue number is 73. So everything I need, I'll take it from here for the specific article or document. Okay. Because again, what I need to have is a link that is working so that besides reading your presentation of a document, I can click myself and see if there is anything else if you treated the document as it should have been treated, if you included all the relevant, uh, the most relevant passages and ideas in that document. So this was the easy part of a link for Avi Trust sources for Google Books What you have is a slightly confusing system because you're in your browser and you have the URL on top, but that is not what will take you there. Once you found an article, say this one, again, you put the page, you position the page that you want to provide a direct link for, you click on the screen to make sure that the system registers and changes the link. And then you go to this icon with a chain. And this is what is highlighted in blue. That is the link that will take to that direct page. So make sure you do that. In fact, I myself have to correct that link. No, that's fine. Oh no, I wanted it to be the first page. Okay. So, as you can see in here, I've included a short summary, but it's also a summary that is focusing on the topics that I want to introduce in the quotes and the analysis. 
So your summary is not a generic description of the article. It's a description which includes essentially everything that is relevant for the presentation of the document, quickly describing or processing everything else. I've included a few quotes and the article is an article where Barney Oldfield, which you've seen last week in uh, one of the silent movies from 1913, is describing the feeling of driving at speeds, uh, at high speed, although in, in this case we're talking about 60 to 80 miles per hour, but a lot for that period, for that initial period. So you can see how all of these um, passages include interesting references, and I've included everything that helps with my analysis. Before the analysis, I have a classification. So what are very simply, quickly, the topics of this article, the feelings and sensations of speed, the action to speed, the fact that the faster you go and the faster you want to drive. That after a while, even driving 60 miles doesn't feel exciting and you need to drive 80 miles or 100 miles to feel the same kind of excitement, of physical excitement. So the desire to go faster and faster produced by the experience of speed. And then one of the topics, since they're talking about going as quickly as possible, is land speed records. You find my analysis, which is just the unpacking of what is being stated by the driver, and you can read this at home. And in this case, it's just three short paragraphs, okay? Now, everything that I have placed in here uh, adds up to 550 words, okay? So that means that, again, with five or six such documents, I would be able to complete the project. Again, it doesn't mean that every document has to be this long. Some may be a bit shorter, some may be a bit longer, okay? That's fine, as long as the length reflects the importance of the document itself. Keep in mind that you don't have to follow the template to the letter for the last section, you don't have to count the words, right? And include a length uh, section in your template. There is an alternative, as promised earlier, that would be a traditional paper, if you're fine with that, on the black motor car by Harris Birdland. And I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. In here you find the novel that you can read or download from Adi Trust or Google Books. And again, in this case, you would be 25,000, 2,500 to 3,000 words. Of course, a zero is listed in here. It'll be corrected later. And the focus is, how is the automotive technology represented? What language? when the automobile is described or the operation of the automobile and what is the narrative function of the automobile in this novel. And, and of course you have an evil hero frightening British society with this black car that it can drive in excess of 100 miles and travel great lengths uh, over great distances in England. Okay. So, we have at least 20 minutes to devote to this, and we'll probably have to continue uh, then next week with this, so we'll just start and we'll discuss the findings of this. I have in here 15 examples see here, of possible documents 
I will uh, give each a number so that no more than two students are working on the same document. And I want you to look at this document and prepare a few notes about what you found relevant in that document and classify that document from one to five. Where one would be a document that is completely irrelevant for the project, not to be included at all. Two, if you think that document is merely adequate which would be marginal and if you want to have a good project you shouldn't have any of that kind either put a three if you think the document is good give it a four if you think it's very good and give it a five if you think is exceptional or extraordinary. So the purpose of this exercise is to train ourselves to recognize documents that are three, four, or fives because you want to have your project to be inclusive of mostly three and four level document. And if you're lucky enough, you'll find some five level document. Okay? So the way we go about this is simple. We start with one from Alexa. The next person will be one as well. And then two, two, three, three, etc. So spell out your numbers so you know which document you're working on. And then click on the link associated with your number. Look at the document. You can put some notes in your Google Docs file, but anywhere would be fine. I want to open the discussion either today or next week about this. So wherever you place your notes, make sure they're available, accessible next time. In your notes, of course, you can try to justify why you would classify this document as one, two, three, four, or five. Possibly highlight one or two passages that you think are, are striking and you can use as an argument to justify the strength of this document. In general, familiarize yourself with the contents of the document so that you can describe what the document is about. So we're not trying to catalog the document you have, just to familiarize ourselves with it and with its features, its qualities, and the content. Open the document, and again, it could be a poem, it could be an article, it could be a short story, all Categories are represented in here. It could be an ad, it could be an illustration, okay? Do your best, even if you think the document is not really worth your time for the project. For the purpose of this activity, the idea is how much can I can get out of this document? And then through reasoning, I can say, well, I've gotten so far with this document. Will I be including it? Would I be calling it a one, a two, a three, or a four, or even a five? Okay? But I don't think there are any fives in here. Let me specify what a five would be. A five would be, for example, a document found by a student in a previous course a doctor specializing in the study of the brain talking about the effects that high speeds could have on the brain, saying for thousands of years humanity has been living at limited speeds, what will happen to our body and particularly to our nervous system and our brain's functions when we will be spending time at speeds in excess of 60 miles per hour. That is exceptional, right? That is incredible. Don't think there are any fives in here, but there are certainly uh, representatives of other numbers, okay? So click on the links, examine what you find, 
write a few notes that you can use for to open the discussion today and to continue with the discussion next week when we will be talking about the project again. Of course, if you're working with an illustration, try to identify and extract meaning from the visual elements of the representation. How are the characters different from each other? How are they dressed? What's the expression on their face? What are they doing? Where are they? What are the elements in nature or inside an urban landscape that add meaning to the representation of the use of the car. And some of the illustrations are accompanied by brief texts that help you get the intention of the illustrator for a particular situation that is being offered to the readers. Something else that you may want to explore, both for the documents and the illustrations, is are they connected to what we've been doing in class? Can they be compared, associated with passages and situations that you found described in words, in the narratives that were introduced in the class up to this point? Are there any interesting connections that would introduce evidence of a pattern so, you, uh, you want to start? No. <laughs> no, not, you have a question? Yeah, the opposite. Um, no. Yeah, go ahead. I'm struggling to evaluate this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's open it, right? What's the issue? Is we, we can work on that together. So, I'll put this on the screen. This is a specialized magazine, and editorial jottings is a rubric that appears in every issue talking about a variety of topics having to do with automobile and society. But since this is a specialized issue, you will see that there are several sections, right? And you have titles. Uh, by the way, if you want to follow, you can either look at the screen, but if you cannot make the uh, text, then it is number two, and you can watch on your computer. Let me see if I can make it. Okay, yeah, I can put it. Okay, so this goes on for a few pages, but it's subdivided into different sections. You find here LGB for local government board regulation, and it continues with amendments, old cars, whether slow or fast numbered, etc. And what, what did you think? In, in general, in, in the most candid way, what do you think about this, or how would you classify it? Right? Would you include it or not? Why not? Or why I, you could? I mean, I do think it is a good sum, summary of a cultural issue, or it, it, oh, and like a physical issue. So they're talking about speed, they're talking about tracing, which in their view is some kind of way, a number or a license plate. Initially, in some countries, in some districts, because national policies were slow to be introduced in several countries, cars would have painted numbers on them, not even a license plate, sometimes just a number, which could be a one-digit or a two-digit number because they were rare. So you could have a 44 on your car because you could be identified, then license plates were introduced, etc. So they were trying to say, well, should we have some kind of tracing system or mechanism so that we can curtail speeding and what do we do with cars that are slower, etc., etc. So, so it's overall within the field, within the topic, but how is it relevant from a cultural standpoint? So it describes these policies and regulations, right? But is there significant commentary about speeding or about drivers beyond a description of people 
who uh, have plates on their cars, people who are speeding, etc. Go ahead. Two. Give it. I gave it two. A two? Yeah. Yeah, so at you best. Talk about yeah. cars, but yeah. it doesn't really have anything to do with like culture, its laws, and information. Yeah. It's between a one and a two. A one because it doesn't offer much in terms of commentary. It's the chronicle, only they're chronicling the evolution of policies and regulations. But I don't find enough in here that I could unpack or analyze, explain. I can summarize this, include quotes, and the summary on the quotes would show that this could be cataloged. But when it comes to the analysis, I would end up struggling offering analytical remark, not descriptive remarks about what's in here, but something that I need to explain. Yes? So would it be considered like, almost like boring? Like it's too, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's almost Exactly, too, absolutely. It's almost so too it much has to be interesting. Yeah. And not yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Boring is the best way to describe it. It is not exciting at all, right? It is something you might want to include because I said, oh, I'm doing this class and the professor wants me to do something about documents on the automobile. This is one, so I'm sure he, he will be happy. But it's not something that you would tell a friend saying, oh, I read this crazy story about the ghost of an automobile, right? Uh, or, or, or something along those lines, or what I said before about how the brain is supposed to change because you're spending time at, the, at speeds of 60 or 100 miles per hour. Go ahead. So we could just make like a sentence just for like a source for an, like an informational. No, you, then like the, the you would just move on, okay. right? Because you want your project to be strong. And so you want to be done of three, fours, and fives, right? And possibly not all documents just being threes, but at least some of them be a four or a five because this way you'll have a stronger project. So this, you could develop into the template, but overall, it's a weaker choice. So as we said at best, it's a two, because in the end, it's too technical. Not talking about pistons or carburetors, but even talking about rules and regulations becomes insignificant, irrelevant, unless they're getting a lot into the quarrel between motorists and anti-motorists, people who support the use, the free use of the automobile, as free as possible, and those who say automobiles are dangerous, they're not really useful, uh, they're only being used by the wealthiest, so we want uh, their use to be curtailed uh, because there is no benefit to society in general. There isn't enough of that. So that's the purpose of this exercise, to train you to move on, not spend enough time, and overall, as I said, open these issues and see how long, just by scrolling, it takes to find something. And when you find it, how easy it would be for you to summarize it, select quotes, and analyze it. We will continue with this kind of exercise with the other numbers next week or possibly even the week after that.